Hi, welcome to this month's uh, edition of Chemical of the Month. I'm Todd. And I'm Chris. And you know what, Todd? I just noticed something by looking at the both of us. We've been doing the, with this Hazmat Q thing now for about 10 years, 11 years. Mm -hmm. When we started this, neither one of us had gray hair or glasses. Right. You have no hair. Yeah. I that have a lot of change. That hasn't changed yet. And now I have glasses. Right. I think we're getting old. It happens. It happens. But with, with age comes wisdom, maybe? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Or Social Security. Yeah, that's even better, right? Hopefully, right? So uh, this month we are running uh, a chemical known as picric acid. It's a chemical that isn't is widely run uh, lately, uh, but it's a chemical that we could certainly encounter. And yeah, my experience uh, always was, it seemed like where we always got picric acid was like an old high school or an abandoned right. lab or exactly. something like that. And they found an old amber colored jar and exactly. old, Tucked nobody, away knew, in the back yeah, the nobody knew what cabinet, it was. And, right. Or a dude that like worked at a, you know, a production facility or a lab or, and he took stuff home with him at night and old grandpa, right. you know, when they were cleaning out the house, they found all these old jars. Exactly. That tends to be the stuff where we saw it at exactly. least. Exactly. Same, same, same here. So, which is why we wanted to bring it up because, you know, as people move along and uh, garages get cleaned out, cabinets get cleaned out in the high school laboratories, we end up on these runs occasionally. And so since it's not a run that we encounter very often, that re just reminds us of, of the valid, the, the validity of these charts and how these charts work. Remember that old principle, low frequency, right? Yeah. But a high probability, high probability you know, for, you know, right. got to get it right right now. Exactly. And if I put time in there, exactly. that tends to be where we make mistakes. So, you know, following a system, you know, tends to be exactly. that thing to make Absolutely. sure that I never make a mistake. Right. And this is definitely one of those low frequency type calls. So picric acid is the, is the call it comes in to a high school laboratory or any type of laboratory. And so as we arrive on the scene, we, we could be met by the, uh, the, uh, the staff personnel who but simply describe it as, hey, listen, we found a jar of picric acid tucked away. Um, it's not presenting any particular hazards, but we don't know what to do with it. So the hazmat team turns into kind of a CSI type, sure. of, type of work here. And th this brings out a good point of w when we get into uh, the more definitive information about you know, nurturing some uh, relationships prior to the run. I think will come out come to light and as we go through this. Well, you think about it, I mean, as many times as we're into schools and businesses and things like that, you know, it's probably, especially from the hazmat team, it's probably not a bad opportunity or a thing to think of is to go check out, you know, the chemistry lab. Where right. do they, how do they store their chemicals? Absolutely. Is it appropriate? Right. Make contact with those folks. You know, we Absolutely. used to always joke, we go on an industrial scene, you know, if somebody showed up with a white shirt, a tie, and a sport coat, that wasn't the guy I wanted to talk to. I right. wanted to talk to the dude that had the oh, biggest keys. ring yeah. of keys. Because exactly right. yeah. that's the guy that knew what exactly everything was right. going on in this yeah. place. That's the dude to talk to. Now, his beard was like 10 times longer than mine. Right. But a big old keychain. He's the man. He's You're the right. TPOC for me. Exactly right. So let's go to our charts. So get your charts. Get your books out. I've got my NIOSH. Yeah. Todd's got version 20 of the new Hazmat IQ chart. Yep. So here we go. So we're going to start on uh, chart two. Look, we're going to look for the chemical name in alphabetical order here. Looking in the P's, I don't see picric in this list. Nope, neither do I. So if, since it's not here, the no error points us over to the above the line SOG. So remember, this is our 10 second size up, and this is how we're going to assume everything above the line lives and exists. So we're going to say, hey, this is a gas that's heavier than air, and our initial isolation zone is going to be 300 feet and it's going to produce vapors. We're also going to say that it's toxic in parts per million, has ionizing potential, it uh, has uh, carbon and hydrogen in the formula, it's flammable, meaning it has LEL, UEL, and a flash point, it's corrosive acid with fluorine, and it's reactive, it polymerizes water and air reactive, and it's radioactive. So this is our initial size up. Remember, this is what we say is like a working structure fire until we show up, and most of the time we're wrong about that one anyway. Right, you know what I like about it too is it's a 10 second size up, and I know for the sake of the class or sake of the video, so to speak, you know, we're digging a little deeper into this right now, but it's 10 seconds. As soon as I know it's above the line, I'm thinking in my head, gas, toxic, flammable, corrosive, radi reactive, radioactive. Right. And in my head, when I'm saying gas, I'm thinking 300 feet, this thing produces vapors, flammable. Yeah, it's going to exactly. have an LEL. Yeah, it's going to have an I all these things that go through right. kind of the, the, the deeper, kind of the next step. But it's 10 seconds. Absolutely. No, don't spend and, more time And the other way it. I think of this too, Todd, is if I spend more than 10 seconds messing around, Call it above the line and let's go. Exactly right. Yeah, because here again, it sets the wheels in motion. It sets right. our mind in the yeah, place. Don't let perfection get be the enemy of progress. Right on. That's Love for it. the fire chief out in a little town in Minnesota called Greg Martin because he used to always say that to us. 
What's up, Chief? So here we are in chart three, and we're looking at the flammable clue box, and we're looking for any part of the syllable of the name. Hey, so I don't see pick or Rick or any of that kind of stuff in here, so I'm going to answer no to this question. So I answer no to this question. It pushes me over to the flam the first name corrosive gas clues, and I'm looking in the P's here for pick or yeah, I don't see anything I, I don't there see either. Like that either. And so I answer answer no. The question ends up on red one. Hey, so what are the hazards of a red one? So we Everything come down here. We just said. Hey, it says unknown, no match, not sure. So it really isn't unknown. We're being told it's picric acid. So it's not really the unknown or no match. It's just it's a no match. It's not it's not fitting into our system. Just right. Yet. I, like the way I like to think of that, Todd, is the you know chart one and two are my 10 second size up, right above or below. The only thing three and four give me is tweaking down. Right. So right. if nothing changes, my standard above the line size up will work for red one all day, every day, yep. and I can just roll. As soon as I realize it's not here and it's not here, and I'm running red one, I'm going right to, well, let's yeah. look at, yeah. you know, our mission-driven PPE. Exactly right. You know, because we talked about that, you know, on our initial 10-second size up, is we would be wearing turnouts, we'd be taking our meters with us, right. you know, because we said gas, 300 feet, all that stuff. Nothing in here has caused me to change my mind. Right. Now I'm going to go to my reference material. So what, what about the name? Picric acid, though, does that kind of lead you to think, man, maybe we should go in level A on this one because of the name? Yeah, you, you could go down that, but however, what did the system tell you to do? System tells us, hey, we're, we're assisting all hazards here, and our, our system is telling us we're going to wear turnouts in SCBA unless something drives us out right. as far as corrosive hazards. Okay. And I'm not even opposed. If somebody said in their head, hey, I want to pick that, my, my theory has always been, you can choose whatever level of PPE you want, just be able to justify it right. and understand what the red lights and yellow lights are to keep Absolutely. yourself safe. Because some of these folks don't have turnouts. They may only have you know, a level B or a right. class two, mm -hmm. or they may have a level A. That might be all they have. And if that's all they have, that's all you have, folks, that's what you respond in, but you utilize your meters to keep you safe and you follow the system. Absolutely right. So in here, our predictions are, this is all hazards, which include radiation, we our hazards are we're yep, predicting our F and pH paper. Yep. F and pH paper. It could be either acid or base. Uh, we're predicting reaction on the temp gun. We're predicting LEL readings. We're predicting that your PID, your FID, your freon detector, your tube or chip will pick this up. We're also predicting that your KI paper will respond to this. Right. And so we're basically going in on an all hazards approach. The meters haven't changed from any other particular entry. We're just now paying attention to every possible thing to give us more clues about the environment that we find. So it tells us here, step two, we're going to go to the reference book. So it's picric acid. One, did you spell it right? Two, is it in the book? It is in the book, and it's on page 259, and we did spell it right. P-I-C-R-I-C. Awesome. But so picric acid. So I have found it in my reference. Now, again, you can use any reference source you want. If you want to use Wiser, you want to use Hazmaster, it doesn't really matter. Just have something out there that has the chemical and physical properties and gives you the ability to verify what you predicted in step two. Yeah, so in keeping with our system, again, and remember, there's a bunch of information in this book. It's written by scientists, not really for firefighters or by firefighters. It would be in crayon if it was. But we want to make sure we kind of follow in or an order that we can make that makes sense to us. So we predicted that this stuff above the line was going to be a gas. And what, what's the book saying here? It says yellow, odorless, solid. Solid. I thought solids were all below the line, Chris. I mean, what, what's that mean? Well, there are some solids, Todd, that live above the line, right? right? right. So, I mean, that's the cool part about chemistry. There's no absolutes. It's just right. kind of like people. Right. Right? So this is a solid that lives above the line. When I tend to see solids below the line, real quick, just look at the vapor pressure. And right. I've got a small vapor pressure. I'm getting one millimeter of mercury so here. So it's not zero. No, it's not zero. Right. So I have a solid giving right. off a of vapor. So yeah. cool. So we, this ends up going from a gas to a solid. So we've shrunk our initial yeah. isolation. Yeah, our isolation went from 300 to 75. That's nice. way better. That's great. And so you mentioned vapor pressure. So this, this has a vapor pressure. It does. Right. It not only does it, it, you know, not only does it have one, but I notice in the parentheses of the book here, it's got a really high temperature because mm -hmm. most of this stuff is taken at what? Uh, standard temperature and pressure rate, 68 degrees right, sea level right, and all that. Right. But this is saying they got one millimeter of mercury at 383 degrees Fahrenheit. So they had to heat this up a little yeah. bit to get it yeah. to get it to even produce vapors. All right, that's interesting to, to know. It is, yeah. So, but th this could be a stumbling block for us on the scene. Could it? Could, could we get our heads wrapped around the axle? It, it on this could one? be. That's why you don't get wrapped around the axle. Yeah, I don't right. care if it says 383, 783, 220. Look at the end of the day, VP, and it's got one millimeter mercury. What do you think right. this thing produces? Some vapor. Some vapor. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, so and again in our charts, we remind you about vapor pressure, what it's compared to with water. Um, we said these vapors would be heavier than air. 
Yeah, well, it's a solid. Yeah. But you so know, but even the vapors that come off it, yep. the, you know, the molecular weight of the product is 229. Yeah. And I'm just going to make a suggestion or, or a, uh, a prediction that the vapors that come off it are going to be heavier than air as well. That's a great prediction, I'm sure. How about toxicity? We're also, we yep. mentioned So we always, we always say it's yes. Now, I know when we go above the line, we say yes, PPM, parts per million, vapors in air. Yeah. However, this thing just told me it was a solid. So what do you think? Toxic. Yeah. Is this going to say PPM, you think, or milligrams per cubic I, I, meter? I think when I think solid materials, I think particulates in the air. Yeah, I think, so do I. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. When I look up the ideal H box, 75 milligrams per cubic meter, which really that? a fancy way of saying dust in the air. Right, dust in the air. And, which reminds me, if it's toxic dust, though, but it means I don't want to do what? You want to breathe it? Yeah, so I better hey, wear my SCBA. Hey, so um, how about um, the PID? All right, so we were above the line, we predicted PID, yes. When I look at the IP on here, it has a question mark. Huh. So that typically tells us that it has an IP, but it's probably higher than our 10.6. Yeah, because my theory on there would be is if it was less than 10 or 10.6 or less, yeah. they'd have put the number in there. So sure. it has one. Yeah. It's probably just outside of the range of what they have. So I'm still taking it with me. Right. Yeah. Maybe I get a reading, maybe I don't. Right. How about the FID? But with that vapor so pressure being so low, though, I mean, we're going to have to be really close to this thing to get a reading exactly. to begin with. Now, the FID, however, though, because it has carbon and hydrogen in the formula, mm -hmm. low vapor pressure, but I should get a reading on that. Yeah. You know, depending on the temperature, right? If this right. thing is a solid, it's emitting. So here's the thing too, is if I go up there on this solid, and with my FID, I'm getting some readings, I might think, okay, it's, it's heated up enough to right. the point where it is giving off some vapor. Right, and so how would you know the temperature of that? Well, I could use my temp gun. Right, yeah, so we bring out the temp gun, take the temperature of it, and uh, if it shows it's, what was the temperature, 380 that or something? That doesn't even matter, I don't even know if it's gonna get that high, but the reality yeah. of it is, look, yeah. Yeah, guess what? If yeah. I get a reading on my FID, Yep. Is it producing vapors? There you go. Yeah, there Enough. you go. Yeah, there you go. The other stuff, hey, that's, that's for a the Mensa report. meeting or yeah. whatever, yeah. It's all for the report, right? Um, how about um, corrosivity? Are we talking anything for corrosivity? Uh, the name says acid. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to guess. Now, yeah. now, however, though, if I dip the pH paper in there, what color do you think it would turn? I'm going to predict red. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, just the name goes along with it. Um, so how about reactivity? Does it react to anything? So when I come down here to the incompatibilities and reactivity box, there's a lot of things that it reacts, or excuse me, that it could be potentially incompatible with, but when it comes to true reactivities, the note says corrosive to metals, and it also says it's an explosive mixture, or an explosive mixture results when the aqueous solution crystallizes. So is that a fancy way of saying that it dries out? Yeah, I think that's just, you yeah. know, like the 50, 50 cent way or a PhD way of saying uh, when it dries out, it forms crystals. Okay, right. So don't, don't mess with it if it's dry, right? That, that's how I'm seeing that. Um, how about a, a react, radioactivity? Radioactivity, I know I'm looking for 161 through 166, and here's what I see. On the DOT guide, I've got uh, two 113s. I have nothing that's radioactive. 113, 113. Hey, that's an explosive guide, isn't it? 112, oh, yeah, 113, 112, 114. 112, 113, yeah. 114. Yeah. This is DOT guide number 113, so we definitely have an explosive hazard. If, however, if it's wet. Oh. So it has to be wet for it to be Hazard class 113. Right. Or excuse me, ERG guide number 113. ERG guide number, right. Yep. Hey, so th these are our hazards that we're expecting to find based on the book. Mm -hmm. So as we're walking into the laboratory. So for, let me ask you a question though, before we get to the lab, what are you gonna tell me I'm wearing into the lab? What do you want me to wear if you're the uh, hazmat boss? Well, based on question marks for flammability, based on potential for uh, explosion, I'm saying bunker your SCBA. Cool. Yeah. And I just gave you, you're my favorite lieutenant of the day because that's right. what I want to wear to right. the thing that's right. flammable and potentially explodes. Absolutely, yeah. So um, as we make entry or into the environment carrying our Stay Alive 5 meters, mm -hmm. and based on the meter or the chemical physical properties here, what are we expecting to see on our meter? Well, I mean, right now we're kind of all over the board. I mean, we, I don't think we're going to get a lot of readings right. with what we have. Um, because I think it's not going to be producing a lot of vapors. Mm -hmm. I think our biggest thing that we need to look at when we get in there is because when it talked about, you know, the explosive crystallization, when we look at that jar, I want to look up at the top of that jar, see if that thing looks like my beard, right? Is it all got right. some crystals and crusty and you know, what's growing around the top of that? How long has this thing been sitting there? I mean, my experience with picric acid has been, you know, that's, that's the hazard, that's the danger I get worried about mm -hmm. is that I've got all these dry crystals. Right. And even though I've got liquid in there, the stuff in the bottle is, you know, for the most part, as long as it's wet, right. but it's these dry crystals on top. And even sometimes I might not be able to see them right. because they could be inside the threads on the part of the container that I can't see. Exactly. So do we carry a tool that helps us measure whether that stuff is uh, an oxidizer? 
Well, th that was going to be our question for KI paper. There you go, brother. Could we KI this stuff and get, get some type of response? Now, on the all hazards approach, the, the blue X is marked there for us. Mm -hmm. So if we do get a hit on that, that gives us an indication that we're dealing sure. with some type of oxidizing material. <clears throat> so in our meter predictions, as we enter into this environment, we see the, we see the jar, and just as you much described in your scenario there, we, we see a small one ounce jar, two ounce jar, and we see a liquid line, but we see a very faded uh, label on there. Look like right. it's been added. You know, yeah, it been says something there for a while. like you know, NO23C6H2OH on the side of the bottle, and right. you know, it's faded, and it says you know like uh, right. circa 1951. If we predict that if it dries out, it forms explosive crystals. So do we want to touch this thing, or do you yeah, want to we, we yeah. handle this thing? Well, let me give you another one here as we're thinking about this, right? So now we're, we're worried about explosives, and I kind of did some other reading as I was worried about that, and I see a name here, 246 trinitrophenol. Oh, wow. So it's got a synonym that we, maybe let's try to run that through the chart. The only other thing I know that goes 246 trinitro. TNT? Yeah, it tends to be TNT, but this is yeah. this is 246. Like, that sounds like this, this is a... A pretty good explosive potentially yeah, right right so here's kind of my theory on that time when we get into this and we have that if I'm not getting any meter readings and I don't have anybody that's in immediate danger and there's no rescues to be made mm -hmm. and when I have explosive hazards and I have things like guide number 113 right. and I have things that are telling me they could potentially blow up and I get things like 246 trinitro right I tend to call my local bomb squad yeah how much do we want to mess with this stuff? I don't, right. I don't want to mess with it. Now, you? You're not wearing one of those fancy badges up on top that says you know how to deal with bombs. Right, right. Yours says you know how to deal with hazmat. So, right. I mean, utilize the resources that we have. Right. I mean, I think that's why we train, we play together. You know, we understand, we know the teams because we're going to mutually respond together. Absolutely, yeah. Now, could I affect a rescue on this if need be, if I had this stuff spilled or engaged? Absolutely. Yeah. Is yeah. it risky? Sure. Yeah. But at this point, we're doing plumbing here. Right. And we're doing forensics. Right. And I'm not going to risk my life or your yeah. life to try to figure out, is this picric so, acid? So let's, let's play a little what if. Let's say, you know, the, the professor finds this jar and goes, oh, he freaks out because he's worried he's going to get, you know, written up on uh, some type of uh, improper storage handling right. issues. And he's going to be, he loses tenure, you know. So maybe he goes down with chest pains. And could we go in in our bunker grass CBA and effect a rescue with a small jar that's on the, on the lab table? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All Trying to stop us at all. <clears throat> so we get it, we get him out and now, as you said, we've fostered a relationship ahead of time with the bomb team. Hey, what are they going to do when they arrive? Are they going to go in and mitigate this? Are they going to disrupt it with a water cannon? Are they going to put it in an in a, uh, overpack of water itself? And whatever it is they're going to do, we're, we're there to support. Yeah, what, right? then what I would say to you guys is basically whatever your local team protocols are, some teams will try to mitigate this, some teams, but unless you're specifically trained and understand how to mitigate picric acid, Look, at the end of the day, if it's an explosive hazard, call your local bomb squad, let those guys play with it. That's what they get trained to do, no different than, that's why they call us when they get chemicals that they're not familiar with, because we're the hazmat team. Right on. I mean, I think it's a good example, Todd, of, of working with our local law enforcement, running a call that's low frequency, high impact, time sensitive. You know, it tends to be where the high probability or potential is for making mistakes. Follow a system like Hazmat IQ. It's a simple four-step system. It'll allow you to size up any chemical on the planet in 20 seconds, verify it in two minutes. The cool part of it is when we hit the street, we're ready to go to work, right? No longer does it take us an hour to try to figure out what we want to do. And to your point, build those relationships up yep. with those partners that we and have in this right. thing. Yep. So. And one thing's for sure, these low frequency calls are going to bring out the media. So you want to make sure you're, you, you know, you look like you know what you're doing. This is the best way to do that. Right. On behalf of Todd and Chris from Hazmat IQ from Federal Resources, I want to thank you for tuning in for this month's Chemical of the Month. We'll check you guys out next month. Take care.